and employers' questions about your application start with your resume. Find out how well your resume addresses what matters to hiring managers. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. Top resume will give you free detailed feedback about your resume. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. You'll find out what works and doesn't work in your resume so you can fix it yourself. Or you can hire top resume to do it for you. Go to maxlist.org slash top resume. Now let's get back to the show. We're back in the MaxList studio. I'm talking with Ryan Yip. He's an executive coach who helps you find your best career fit, create your personal brand, and organize your job search. And Ryan joins us from the San Francisco Bay Area. Well, Ryan, before the, the break, we were talking about how to answer any interview question. And you recommended two um, well-known methods, the STAR uh, method for talking about accomplishments uh, and and then behavioral preparing for behavioral interview questions. And then you're also, I have outlined for us uh, an approach that um, involves creating philosophical statements and uh, that give you a chance to talk about your general approach and as well as, uh, um, and, and do other things as well. And I, I just, before we paused, we were talking about, you gave an example, a great example of a philosophical statement. Do you have a formula for building this? If somebody is at home thinking, well, how do I do this? What are the most important pieces I need to include? What would you say to them? Yeah, well, you know, it's it's very interesting. You know, I've been asked that before. And uh, people have even asked me, oh, can you write my philosophical statements for me? Or, you know, and things like that. Or And, uh, and, and you know, people are, are you know, very... Uh, conscientious uh, when they th- see these questions, uh, a list of questions, they they actually try to write the answers uh, down, you know, very conscientiously and try to uh, formulate the answers. But sometimes it comes off as too rote and stiff. Um, basically, I would say if you're unsure about how to answer these behavioral questions like uh, how do you handle conflict? How do you get along with others? How do you like to be managed or, or how do you like to manage? You know, I would say you really have to go back to educate yourself about best practices in, in whether it's people management or conflict resolution. Um, th- those types of um, uh philosophies, let's say, or concepts um, can be learned. Um, and it's not for me to, it, it, it's not like a formula that you would kind of just uh, conjure up out of thin air. It really has to be authentic to your experience. Um, and and, and many, um, many people, my clients are quite experienced. They've had five, 10 uh, or more years of experience in the workplace. So they generally, maybe they haven't formulated these, these philosophical statements, but they know kind of intuitively how they handle different situations. So it's just a matter of, of, of crystallizing their thoughts uh, and writing them down and kind of thinking about, in general, how they approach different problems and different issues. Uh, if you're younger, let's say, and you maybe haven't thought about these particular types of questions, uh, then I would... I, I, what I've done is refer them to uh, different uh, websites, let's say, or inf- information and articles about uh, these different issues. Um, and it has to resonate with you. Um, and over the years, um, you know, let's say the, the example about how do you handle conflict? Um, so, you know, you can, there are many books about negotiating and handling and, and conflict resolution. So one of the methods could be, um, you know, you put yourself in the shoes of the other person because you want to get their perspective, even though you might not agree with that perspective, you want to know what it is and why they are are, are having that approach to a particular problem. And then you take the 30,000 mile view of it, objectively look look down on it, both of your um, your opinions about a particular issue. And that is the first way to, to begin negotiating a resolution, a solution. Now, now you know, 
that comes from, in my case, it comes from reading books about conflict resolution, about negotiation and so forth, and, and finding what's authentic to you, what works for you. So it's not for me to say, you know, what exactly you should say. It's, it's how, how you would educate yourself about it. All right. So you, you do the research, you draw on your uh, previous professional experience, and you form an opinion, which is your approach. As you do this work uh, with your clients, Ryan, do you recommend that they write down uh, what their, their uh, the philosophical statement and practice it before an interview? Well, the important part is actually practice. So, um, you know, writing it down is absolutely, you know, what you want to do, uh, taking notes exactly, uh, doing that. But the more important thing, especially for an interview, is to practice. And, and whether you uh, take your recording device, your, your phone, um, some, or the computer to record yourself on video, uh, for me, it helps quite a bit for my clients to, you need to say it out loud. You need to either record it or say it out loud and practice it because um, you can write it down. It sounds great when you when it's written, but as you formulate the words in your mouth, it might not be so easy to, it might not flow the way you'd like it when you're in an interview. So very, very important to say these words um, and, and, these, and these paragraphs and statements that you want to make, practice them until they're very natural to you and change the words so they fit your, <laughs> the, the words fit your mouth easily to say. Uh, and because some words for me are, you know, are, are not easy to, to vocalize. So you have to find ones that are comfortable for you. So you, you write it out, you hit the record button, whether it's audio or video, then you listen or watch uh, the recording. What do you recommend to your clients that they look for as they um, listen to themselves or watch themselves, and and what sorts of things should they look for to change? Well, yeah, I mean, I think they're the common ones where you don't want to say, um, and this is some of my own uh, things that I look for. You don't want to, you don't want to have these you knows or these. Uh, vocal ticks and th so forth you want to find, sound very um smooth when you when you when you uh give your answers i think the more you know important thing is to sound confident i think you know i, I mentioned this previously when we talked uh, prior to this uh podcast that um you want to sound comfortable and confident um and and the way that i would say you would want to do that is to go into uh, an interview uh, with a uh, be of service attitude. Um, so what I mean by that is that you want to be confident in that you've done the work that uh, that they, they they require, or at least you you've done some of it. And if if, if you don't know exactly, uh, you know you don't have the experience exactly of, of what uh, they want to, you to do, uh, then you can learn it quickly. Uh, you're you can come up to speed quite quickly. So. I, I would recommend that you go in very confident, confidently uh, and say, and you're offering your services, trying to find, find a good connection between you and the interviewer. And the interviewer might want to judge you, uh, but that shouldn't affect your self-esteem or or your confidence. Uh, it's just not a good fit if 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 they you know if if for some reason uh, their qual uh, their their requirements don't fit your qualifications. I, I know there are other external uh, factors that come in if you've been looking for a, a job a long time and there's financial considerations and so forth. But I would say try to go into an interview. Uh, just to be of service and offering your services and, and just seeing if you can find that connection. So that's really, really important. I think that helps relax uh, you during an interviewer and will help uh, whatever philosophical statements or answers or accomplishments that you um, uh, will give during an interview. It will help uh, to make it sound, you want to sound relaxed. You want to sound relaxed and confident. That's really, really important. After you share that philosophical statement and it's given you time to think about what you might other points you might make then do you what do you do next ryan do you talk about accomplishments 
you do talk about accomplishments, but again, uh, when I've um, talked to my clients, many times they'll be very conscientious and 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 write out their their accomplishment stories, but it will sound very monotone uh, because of their reading off off like a script. Um, and so again, you want to practice uh, recording yourself, and and there's a certain structure that I recommend also, and and that is to. Uh, present each of your accomplishments as as a story. Everybody's seen movies, read books, and so forth. Um, and so if you can structure it, structure it like a story, in other words, you're the main character, you know who the audience is, the audience is the interviewer, um, there's always a character arc. So in other words, you start, you know, a little bit of background, and then you're building up, you know, you're going through, you know, what you did, uh, the actions you took. Um, and then there's a punchline or, you know, a, 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 a uh, yeah, you would call it a climax, let's say you're going up. And, and, and so you want to really engage, engage the interviewer in your story. And that means not taking too long to, 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 to explain the story and make it, you know, make it interesting. That's the main thing. And then you have your punchline. These are the actions you took. These are the results you got, you know, uh, whether it's productivity, efficiency, percentages, a uh, customer served, um, you know, some kind of monetary, uh, and it's, and I know it's difficult if you're not in, sa in sales to have a, put a, a dollar amount on, on the impact you've had in a company, but in, in, in the way that you can, you want to try to quantitate it, uh, uh, your accomplishments, just because, you know, we hear so much about um, uh, adjectives about your skills. This is what I've done. This is what I can do, and so forth. But what really proves what you've done? What you, what the skills that you have? It's the accomplishments that you've you've uh, achieved, and 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 the impact it's had on on the company, so or your team, and so forth. It's it's been a, a great conversation, Ryan. Now, uh, tell us what's coming up next for you. Yeah. So. So I'm finding more and more I'm doing executive coaching and, and, and how it relates to um, uh, people that are, are, are applying for jobs and, and seeking more different roles is that uh, especially people of color, they've gone through uh, their, their jobs and, and, and up the, their career development and to become technical leaders, let's say senior directors. Um, and then they want to uh, apply for uh, and, and get uh, VP roles. And so that's a different skill set. That's more of the soft skills, emotional intelligence, uh, people management. So I'm helping more and more uh, people uh, prepare for those types of interviews in terms of soft skills, people management um, and emotional intelligence, how you perceive other people's emotions and how you communicate well with others. So that's more the work I'm doing recently. Great. I know our listeners can learn more about you and, and your services by visiting your website and that's elncoaching.com. We'll be sure to include that in the show notes and the website article as well. Uh, now, Ryan, given all the great advice you've shared today, what's the one thing you want a listener to remember about how to answer any interview question? I, I really think that uh, being of service is number is really number one. Is is being going in with a be of service attitude, and then also have this vision. You know, think about yourself. In, you've seen in conferences where there's a person on stage, they're being interviewed by a moderator, they're having a big vision uh, of how they run their company and how they, how they manage their people and how they work uh, with their people. So think a little bit more of the big picture uh, about how you would contribute to the company, and that will help you with your, with your uh, interviewing, uh, behavioral interviewing questions and answers. Make sure you never miss an episode of Find Your Dream Job. Subscribe to our free podcast newsletter. You'll get information about our guests and transcripts of every show. Go to maxlist.org slash show notes. Again, that's maxlist.org slash show notes. Next week, our guest will be Markel Morris. She's a career counselor and the founder of Futures in Motion. Markel helps her clients take charge of their careers 
navigate the job market, and reach goals with confidence. She says there is one basic error that applicants make again and again. Avoid it and your job search becomes easier, shorter, and more rewarding. Join us next Wednesday when Markel Morris and I talk about the biggest mistake job seekers make and what to do instead. Until next time, thanks for letting us help you find your dream job. This show is produced by Max List. Susan Thornton Huff schedules our guests and writes our newsletter. Lisa Kislin-Barry Anderson manages our social media posts. Our sound engineer is Will Watts. Ryan Morrison at Podfly Productions edits the show. Don Mole creates our transcripts, and our music is by Freddie Trujillo. This is Mac Pritchard. See you next week 